Okay, great. Hi, I'm Dr. Linder. We're going to cover the digestive tract, okay? So let's see what we have here. So if we start here at the lips, we have the orbicularis oris. Those are the muscles around the lips. Here's the tongue. Be familiar with the cranial nerves that deal with tongue, whether it be taste or movement or sensitivity. Here's the hard palate. Here's the soft palate. Here's the uvula. Here's the nose. Behind here is the nasopharynx. Here's the mouth. And the posterior portion is the oropharynx. Here's the throat, the larynx. Behind that is the laryngeopharynx. So when food goes in and you're chewing, this is bolus. The bolus moves down. As it moves down, the epiglottis closes off this structure, which is the windpipe or the trachea. So the trachea would be in front, and it diverts the food down the back to the esophagus. Here's the esophagus. The esophagus comes down, joins up with the stomach. But there's a sphincter right here called the gastroesophageal sphincter, also known as the cardiac sphincter. This portion of the stomach is the fundus. This portion, right around here, is called the cardia. And this here is the body of the stomach. These rough in, these folds that we see here are called rugae of the stomach. This is the lesser curvature of the stomach and the greater curvature of the stomach. Now, when food is here and it's mixing up, I shouldn't say food, but when the bolus is here mixing up, we don't call it bolus anymore, we call it chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. So the chyme moves down, wants to empty from the stomach into the first portion of the small intestine called the duodenum, but in order for it to leave the stomach, this valve here has to open up, and that's called the pyloric sphincter or pyloric valve. Now the food moves into the duodenum, the first portion of the small intestine. There are three portions, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum in that order. Here is the pancreas. This is the pancreatic duct. And the top one is the accessory duct. This duct here opens up into the papilla of the duodenum. And remember, the pancreas is going to be releasing sodium bicarbonate, and pancreatic lipase, pancreatic carbohydrates, pancreatic protease to help break down the food in the duodenum. Here is the liver. Here's the gallbladder. So the, the liver makes cholesterol and it makes bile and it can store that in the gallbladder. When food is in the duodenum and the duodenum releases CCK or cholecystokinin, it moves to the gallbladder makes the gallbladder contract. That cholecystokinin also goes to the pancreas to make it release its digestive, or, uh, its digestive enzymes. Remember the pancreas is in a mixed gland. It's endocrine and exocrine. The endocrine portion dealt with insulin and glucagon, and the exocrine portion is dealing with the, with the digestive enzymes. So CCK will act on the pancreas as well as the gallbladder. The gallbladder will contract, releasing bile, the bile moves down the cystic duct. This is the cystic duct right here. This is the uh, left and right hepatic duct. Then there is a common hepatic duct. And then there is a common bile duct. The purple would represent the hepatic portal vein. The blue is the hepatic uh, I'm sorry, this is the hepatic portal vein. The blue is the inferior vena cava. Okay, so now we're in the duodenum. After the duodenum, we've got the largest portion of the small intestine called the jejunum. Food mo moves from the jejunum down into the ileum. The lowest portion here is the ileum. The ileum meets the colon at this portion here. It's called the cecum. It means blind pouch. Where the ileum meets the cecum, we have a valve called the ileocecal valve. Here off of the cecum is the vermiform appendix, that's lymphatic tissue. Food moves up, the ascending colon. Then it makes a sharp turn. That turn is called the right hepatic flexure, also known as the, um, uh, the 
hepatic flexure or right colonic flexure. It's either called a hepatic flexure or the right colonic flexure. Then the colon goes across, that's a cut section from here to here. That there would be tubing connecting across, that would be called a transverse colon. Then we've got this arc, this curvature here, called the splenic flexure or the left colonic flexure. Then we've got the descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anus. Okay? Let's see what else we have here. Let's take a look at this. Here we've got the kidneys, the suprarenal or adrenal gland, the spleen, pancreas. This would represent the liver, and then what's behind it we can see is the gallbladder. So let me keep it turned this way. So now we've got the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. These are our accessory organs. So when the, the wadnum releases CCK or cholecystokinin, it acts on the pancreas as well as the gallbladder. So this will release its digestive enzymes through the pancreatic duct, either through the accessory duct, which leads out here, or this duct, which leads into the duodenal papilla. Here's the gallbladder. The gallbladder releases the bile down the cystic duct. Here's the liver, so there's two ducts, one being the left and right hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct, and where the common hepatic and cystic duct come together forms the common bile duct. And you can see it come right through here, common bile duct. So the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct join and it will release all of those digestive enzymes through the duodenal papilla. Okay? And what's left? We can look here. We're looking at the different layers of the intestine and the digestive tract. So these are villi. We can see the villi. We can see the lacteal here, plus an artery and vein, but these are lacteals where the fats are going to go into. This upper portion here is called the mucosa. This portion here, this first divided layer, is called the muscularis mucosa. Then we have the sub-mucosa down in here. This is the muscularis externa, which is here. This is still muscular tissue here as well. And then what's inferior to that, to the outermost portion, is the serosa. This is uh, lymphoid nodules here. You can see the lymphatics. This is where your fat-soluble substances move into, your vitamins A, D, E, and K, arteries and veins. What type of cells do we have up here? These are columnar epithelium. Columnar epithelium. Okay? Okay, I think that brings it to a close.